so we can all, oh, I know, doesn't it? It's very energizing. So I gave you the peppermint for a reason, all right? Um, what I want to talk about today, and I've talked about it a lot, is neuroplasticity. And I'm always, you know, I, every week I give you something to do with neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity is just creating new neural pathways of the brain, all right? And um, it used to be considered that um, the brain reached a certain age and it no longer grew. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, know, you weren't gonna learn anything new and the brain wasn't growing. And they have since discovered that that is not true at all. In fact, the brain can completely change, it can grow, um, it can create new neural pathways your entire life, all right? So um, there's a term called neuroaerobics, aerobics for the brain, neuroaerobics. And neuroaerobics is all about um, learning ways to move against the routine, non-routine ways of moving and non-routine ways of thinking. And um, they looked at Einstein's brain after he died, and they discovered that Einstein had um, the same amount of neurons as an average person, and they, it's like um, 30,000 or something. Um, he had this, they had the same amount of neurons, but the difference is Einstein had like three times as much synapses. So if a neuron is like a tree and it branches out, you've got all these trees, all these branches in the brain, and these trees almost touch, the branches almost touch, and there's the space. Well, that's where the synapses occur, in that space. And it was discovered that Einstein had like three times as much synapses occurring as, as the average person. And what that meant was that he was really able to think outside the box. Where a lot of us think very linearly, he was able to think outside the box. His brain worked in a little bit different ways. And it's said that through uh, neuroaerobics and working on creating new neural pathways in our brain, we can continue to uh, get smarter, think outside the box, and so I want to, and I like to, I'm really playing with this a lot lately. I've been to it, and I know I always torture you guys every week with some sort of neuroplasticity exercise. Um, for neuroaerobics, ways to do it is to work with your non-dominant hand. Now, I think all of you know that I'm, I gotta have surgery on my right shoulder. Um, it's scheduled for May 2nd, and I'm right hand dominant. So I've been trying to put my hand up here and do stuff with my left hand. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. So this morning I brushed my teeth with my left hand. You should have seen them. <laughs> so, um, so to do things, so if you normally eat, hold your fork with your right hand, try it with your left. And you don't want to do it all the time. You want to keep switching back and forth. Keep your brain guessing. So using your non-dominant hand. Another way of um, neuroaerobics is to cross midline of the body. And we do that all the time here in class. I'm always having you cross midline of the body. Um, balancing. Balancing on one foot is really beneficial, not only obviously for your balance, but to balance left and right hemispheres of the brain. It makes your brain have to think, sending those messages to the body, playing, doing puzzles and games. There's so many ways that we can uh, do the, the neural aerobics, and we can do them all through the day. Another thing is smell. Identifying different smells. That's why I gave you peppermint this morning, right? Peppermint is super energizing. And just breathing it in, just kind of just, you know, it's just really nice. So what I'm gonna do now is I want you, like we always do, we're gonna start, scoot back, get really comfortable, axial extension, so lengthening the spine, Gently engaging the lower abdominals. We're going to close our eyes. And I'm going to play, just briefly, I'm going to play uh, some nature sounds. And another way to stimulate these neural pathways is by trying to identify sounds. Close your eyes. 
and just notice what sounds you hear, not only from this music, but maybe even from the room uh, or from the outside of this room. Keep your eyes closed, your attention drawn inwards, and begin to observe your own breath as it flows in and out of your body. Begin to observe what parts of your body are moving with the breath. Now, if you're primarily feeling your chest rise and fall, I invite you to see if you can drop the breath a bit lower into the belly. And as you inhale, notice the belly expanding, notice the ribs expanding. As you exhale, notice the ribs contracting and the belly descending without forcing. This draws us into a diaphragmatic breath, which is a more efficient way for us to breathe. Just take a couple more rounds of breath. And when you come around to your next exhalation, just slowly begin to open the eyes. Let's rest our hands just on our thighs lightly. We're gonna come back to some of this neuroaerobics, neuroplasticity. Just lift your thumbs up and set them down. Index fingers lift, middle fingers, ring fingers, and pinky fingers. Now go back, ring fingers, middle, index fingers, thumbs. Now try to lift your right thumb up, your left pinky finger. Set them down. Right index finger, left ring finger. And down, both middle fingers. And down. So right ring finger, left index finger. You might have to look down and make sure they're doing what you're asking them to do. And down. Try to lift right pinky finger, left up. And down. Now shake that out. Good job. Clasp your hands. So with your hands clasped, let's do that. And I, I didn't dictate to you which way to clasp your hands. So lift your outside thumb first. And then the other thumb. Index finger. Index finger, thumb, I, that's not your thumb, middle finger, <laughs> middle finger, ring finger, ring finger, pinky, pinky, take it back, pinky, ring, ring, middle, middle, index, index, thumb, thumb, shake it out, <laughs> good. Now let's rotate those wrists. And as you rotate the wrist, roll your fingers too, almost like you're playing the piano midair. And then rotate them the other direction. And then bring your fingertips together as if you're holding a little invisible ball here. Relax your shoulders. So hold this ball. And we're going to, and I'm going to turn my hands here so you can see. We're going to rotate your thumbs one around the other. So go one direction and then reverse the direction. See if they don't, try not to let them touch and bring them back together. Now let's do that with our index fingers. 
and rotate them the other way. And touch them. Now middle fingers, ooh, they want to touch. I know. And rotate them the other direction. Now this is the tough one, ring fingers. I can't do it without them touching. They hit, yeah. And take it the other direction, Candy. I like the face you're making to with your, uh-huh. And touch now, pinky fingers, those are easy. Those kind of just want to roll around. And take them the other direction. Oh, good, and shake that out, very good. Just rest your arms, let them hang, let them dangle. Relaxing these upper trapezius muscles. So we were talking, I was talking with Candy about, um, especially women, we tend to get really tight across the shoulder. Yeah, I'm getting all this. Mm -hmm. yeah. We get really tight across here. Then it can get up into the neck and bother the neck. And this is the upper trapezius muscle here that tends to get really tight. Think about carrying purses, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. We tend to carry a purse here, and this really tightens these muscles up. So we want to release them, but if you pull your shoulders down, you're also tightening them. So we want to kind of wiggle them out and allow them to relax. So let's take our shoulders and roll them forward a few times. Make sure your breath is still flowing nice and smoothly. And now roll those shoulders back a few times. Good, now come back to center. Shrug the shoulders up and just let them drop. Shrug and drop. One more time, and relax. Now, how many of you feel tightness in your neck? I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so right, it's nice for the shoulders. We're getting that range of motion in the shoulders, but when we work these muscles, it, we feel it in our neck, right? So let's do something about that. <clears throat> Rest your hands and let's drop our chin. And just let the head drape for a moment. Now slowly begin to roll your uh, left, right ear to your right shoulder. As long as that feels appropriate for your neck, let it drape so it becomes heavier. And then slowly roll the chin back to center. And then left ear to left shoulder and just allow it to drape. and then slowly roll it back. Let's take one more round. Right ear to right shoulder, and if you want, drape your left arm off the side of your chair. So that will add that little additional stretch across that upper trapezius muscle. And then slide the left hand back. Bring your chin back to neutral. Left ear to left shoulder, and let that right arm drape. And then slide, bless you, slide that right hand back, roll that chin back, and lift your gaze. And I'm hoping your neck feels better now. Yeah, so if we do shoulder work, do your shoulder work first, then do some really gentle neck stretches, and it will help release some of those muscles. Bring your arms up, and if you can, we're going to bring the elbows parallel with the shoulders. This might not be available for everyone. Relax the tops of your shoulders and start to bring your arms in. Open your hands like you're reading a book. Now my elbows won't go together because of my shoulder issues. A lot of your elbows do. Now inhale, start to open them up. Let the chest open. Draw your lower abdominals in and exhale. Close it back up. Let's do this a few times. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe in. And breathe out. One more time like this, breathe in. And breathe out. Now bring those elbows right down into your waistline. Palm up. So we're holding our mimosas, because that's a morning drink, right? Or Bloody Marys, if you do. My husband loves Bloody Marys. Yeah. All right. Offer your mimosa or Bloody Mary off to the one side and bring it back. And then offer it to the left. Keep those elbows in and bring it back. One more time like this. This is really good for the range of motion in the shoulder joint. We know a lot of arthritis sets in the shoulders. 
Now bring it back. Now you've got really thirsty people on either side. Open it up. And bring it back. And once again, offer it open. And bring it back and shake it out. Good work. Grab hold of your pot and we're going to scoot forward. Root down through the feet. Zip your jeans, ladies. So we're zipping those jeans in, lower abdominals. Take your block and place it on your right hand. Reach the arm out, but relax that upper trapezius muscle. Now start to take the block off to the right and just watch it. Take it back as far as you feel comfortable with the range of motion. And then slowly bring it back forward. And now this time as we take it out to the right, I want you to look to the left. and bring it back to center and release it like switch hands. So I brought this up to the class before and I want you to be aware because I'm aware of my body. My left shoulder is really healthy. So this shoulder can roll open and my hand is really nice and flat. My right shoulder is the one I need surgery on. I want you to notice something. My shoulder wants to roll in. I cannot get this shoulder to roll open. So that means my hand wants to roll in a little bit. It's harder for me to balance on this side to see the difference between my hands. So just be aware of your own body, what's going on. So I'm trying to rotate that shoulder open without pain. Now as we open up to the left, just watch the block. And then bring it back through center. Now this time as you open up to the left, look in the opposite direction. And bring it back to center and relax it. Just set that block down. Let's do a few. We're going to work through those six movements of the spine. And we do this almost each week. It's a wonderful way to open up the spine. Now if you suffer from um, osteoporosis, especially osteoarthritis, um, you want to avoid grounding so much into the spine, whether it's a forward fold or even when we do these cat-cows. If you have um, osteoporosis or osteoarthritis in the back, you want to avoid a bunch of rounding, okay? Just less range of motion because that can create little spinal fractures and we want to avoid making the situation any worse. So place your hands on your legs, inhale, Arch your back, uncurl, lift your chest, lift your gaze a little bit. Now exhale, everything curls in. So once again, less range of motion if you're suffering from osteoporosis. Inhale, arch. Exhale, curl in on yourself. Two more times, breathe in, uncurl. And exhale, and curl. Last round like this, breathe in. And breathe out. Now inhale, ride back up to a neutral spine. So zip your jeans. Inhale, sweep your arms up. And on your exhale, let's just twist to the right. Easy twist. Inhale, arms up or just shoulder height if that's where you need to be. Exhale, twist to the left. Couple more times. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Now come back through center. Breathe in. Good. Exhale, release those hands down. We're going to take our little side bends. So inhale the left arm up. Exhale, lateral flexion. Inhale, switch. Exhale, bend. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, and release it down. Good, shake it out. All right, here we go. Your torture. Not that this is gonna end here, but this is, the, this is neuroplasticity, all right? So we're going to start out, right arm, we're gonna lift it up and down. Now, if it doesn't lift all the way, that's okay, do the best you can. Lift it up and lift it down. Now left arm, we're going to lift it up 
and it's going to come out. It comes up, it comes out. Got it? And release it down. We're going to put those two together. So both arms come up. Now the right arm comes down, the left arm goes out. They come up. <laughs> what you doing over there, Kathy? And out. Now inhale up and release it down. We're going to switch it. Inhale, left up, and inhale down. Sorry, exhale down. Good. Now right side. Inhale up, exhale out. Inhale up, exhale out. Inhale up, and release it down. We're going to put those two together. Inhale up. Left arm comes down, right arm goes out. Exhale. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, and breathe out. Shake it out. Everyone's got it perfectly, right? <laughs> all right, we're gonna alternate now. So what, well, yeah. <laughs> so the right arm will come up, left arm out. Then we're gonna switch, all right? Are we ready? <laughs> All right. Both arms up. Breathe in. Right arm down, left arm out. Inhale up. Switch. Inhale up. Left arm out. Inhale up. Right arm out. Just try to focus on the arm that's coming out. The other, yeah, I saw that candy. <laughs> And Kathy's over there, she's, what are you doing? You're doing an orchestra over there. Yeah. 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 Shake it out. I'm not sure, I'm trying not to look to this side of the room. This side of the room was doing really well. I'm not sure what's going on to this side of the room over there. What is that sign I saw Candy doing something, and then Kathy just gave up, and she's just doing this. So luckily, they're back in the corner. They don't distract us. Do not look over there. All right. Let's take your hands if you can, and place them under your right knee. Mm -hmm. Long spine. So it's not going to help to lift the leg up high if we collapse into the spine. So lift your chest. Draw your bellies in and just lift that leg up as much as you feel comfortable. Now hold the leg in, flex that right foot, and press that right foot forward. And draw, I'm like, that is not my music. Draw back in and press it forward. And draw it back in. Hmm? No, it's hers. She's turning it off, yeah. Oh, thank good. it wasn't you this time. <laughs> now, extend the leg. Now, remember, it doesn't have to necessarily be straight. Just lift, I'm more concerned about the spine. Straighten the leg. Now, point and flex. Point and flex. Now, rotate those ankles, one ankle. Oh, a lot of cracking. Rotate it the other way. Oh, we go more cracking that way. And draw it in. Oh, and set it down and shake it out. Let's try that second side. Long spine, our bellies engage. See if you can lift that left leg up. If you just got to hold it here, whatever works for you. And it doesn't have to be high. Now flex your foot and push away and draw it in. So we're stretching the backs of the legs, the hamstring muscles, but we're also working these quadricep muscles, the front of the legs. Now one more time, hold it out, lift your chest a little more, now point and flex. So working the ankles, we want to keep those strong ankles for balance. Now rotate all that crackling. None of us would make very good burglars. <laughs> Not if we have to walk upstairs and we make all this crackling. So rotate them the other way. Good. And release it down. Shake it out. Let's take those feet a little wider. Sit towards the edge of your chair, but uh, no falling off the chairs. Check and make sure that your knees, I'm always bugging you about this, 
the knee center of the knee is right at the center of the ankle, and everything is facing with the same direction of the toes. So this is about knee health. Place your hands on your legs. Now inhale to a long spine. As we exhale, we're gonna hinge from the hip creases. Try not to let your spine change shape. Gaze down a little so the neck is long. Now, if you're spilling your guts here, if you've unzipped your zipper, zip it back up. That's gonna help protect the lower back. Inhale, rise up with a flat spine. Spine doesn't change shape. Exhale, we hinge forward. It doesn't matter how deep you go. Inhale, and we come up. Two more times, exhale. We hinge, inhale, we rise. Last time, exhale, we hinge, and inhale, we rise. We're gonna take this into a forward fold. Now, I really want to give you that little contraindication forward fold. So I can forward fold, look how long my spine is, and I can go there, but once I start to fold, you can see how I naturally begin to round. If you have osteoporosis, osteoarthritis uh, in the spine, um, that's really not recommended. We don't want to start to really round into the back. So listen to your own bodies, and you might not you know, know that you're damaging, but if those things apply to you, maybe you keep your spine long, and this is your forward fold. You have to choose what works for your body. So we're gonna inhale here. We're gonna start with the long spine, and we're gonna go forward as much as we can. Gaze down. Now I'm gonna slide my hands down my shins to my ankles. I'm gonna let my head drape, and I'm gonna peek under my chair. Draw your belly in. Now inhale, start to slowly slide up. Find your long spine and rise up. You've got to use those core muscles. Breathe in. Exhale. Now pause at the bottom, breathe in. Let out the breath. Inhale, long spine. Oh, and rise up. Walk those feet back together and shake it out. Everyone feeling okay? Let's do it, let's stand up. So we're going to, so this class is, there's a lot of it, about half of it we do standing. All right, make sure your block, any props, water, glasses, anything is under your chair. So you don't take the chance of maybe uh, tripping on something. Bring your feet inner hip distance apart. So find your inner hip bones and drop a plumb line straight down through the center of the knees, center of the ankles, down to maybe your second toe or something. And we're gonna just stand in Tadasana Mountain Pose. So working through neuroplasticity in the brain, the neural pathways, neural aerobics, one of the best ways we can do is just to establish our balance. So that's what we're going to do. Stand really nice and tall. You're welcome to hold on to the chair or bring the arms down. I want you to take a moment and gaze down at your feet. This is not how we would normally stand, looking down, I hope. But lift all 10 toes off the floor if you can. If you're wearing shoes and you, that's not an option, you know, work with it. And now slowly relax the toes without gripping. Now as we lift our gaze, I want you to really feel into your own feet. Notice if you have more weight to your heels, more weight forward. See if you can balance the weight. Notice if you have more weight rolling open in supination or more weight rolling in in pronation and find that balance. Now start to firm up the legs and we say lift the kneecaps. That's, that's really hard sometimes to understand. So if I start to firm up my thigh muscles, it feels as if my kneecaps lift, but really important, please don't do this. Don't shove the kneecaps back to where this is really hard. It raises the blood pressure and it blocks energy meridians in the back of the leg. So when I stand, I have a little bit of softness there. My legs are still straight, but there's a softness. The trick is, can we find the softness in the backs of the knees, but still engage our quadricep muscles? So try to squeeze your quadricep muscles a little more. Okay. Notice how your knees want to push back. So find the happy medium. Soften your knees, but keep your quadriceps 
the thighs engaged. Now start to draw the lower belly in and take your tailbone down. It lengthens. Our front ribs draw in and our chest, our sternum lifts. Now if we take the shoulders gently back, the tips of our shoulder blades feel as if they're drawing together. My thumbs, with my shoulders rolling forward, my thumbs come in. If I take my shoulders back, I see my palms start to turn forward. So see, if your palms can start to turn forward by the action in the shoulders, the upper back muscles. Now the last thing we know, we work on it a lot, is we don't want the head reaching forward or the chin lifting up. So we draw the back <coughs> of the skull back so it aligns with our spine. A lot of work, first just a standing pose. Now, you've got the chair, so let's touch the chair up first. I'm going to invite you. If you suffer from vertigo or balance challenges, you probably don't want to close your eyes. If you don't, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and notice what a difference this makes. One of the things we rely on for balance is um, our vision. Now, if you want and you feel really stable, try to let one hand release one hand from the chair, just release it down by your side. If you're feeling very stable, you can release both hands. And just take a moment with the eyes closed and feel. And then open the eyes and grab hold of the chair. Excellent. It makes a big difference, doesn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Really good for us, though. You can feel your body moving when your eyes are closed. And it's meant to do that. Mm -hmm. It's meant to keep recalibrating for its balance. So now we're going to work. All of this is brain, but we're going to do super brain yoga. We've done it before. We're going to do it again. Uh, remember, it's been on Dr. Oz, so it must be right, right? <laughs> so we're going to step back a little. Going to take my feet wider, and I'm going to turn my toes slightly out at a diagonal. Because I'm going to bend my knees, I want my knees to track. No rolling in of the knees. You don't have to go far. Left hand crosses the chest first. Always left hand. It does not change. Take your fingers. I've got lots of earrings on. Hopefully you don't. And grab hold of your right earlobe. My thumb is in front. My finger's in back. Okay, got it? Right arm crosses, switch. Still thumb in front, fingers in back, we're squeezing our earlobes, okay? So what we're going to do is we're gonna inhale down and exhale up, so it's gonna look like, and I'm pausing just for a moment, down. Only go as far as you feel comfortable. We're going to try to do this 21 times. <laughs> if 21 doesn't work for you, do five. I don't care, but usually we're trying to do 21. Go as slow or as fast as you want. You count. I'm going to do my 21 and then I'm going to stop. Ready? Inhale down. This is my last one. Slow as your breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out. So that's called super brain yoga. And if you kind of forget, if you can just remember the title, you can YouTube it. 
<laughs> or Google it and it will pull it up and it will tell you if you forgot which hand across verse, it'll tell you which way to do. It's always done the same. And it's meant to open new neural pathways of the brain. So we're back to neuroplasticity, always coming back to that. So let's step to the right of our chair. Yes. Are you supposed to put, close our eyes when you do that? No, I keep my eyes open. I just okay. kind of gaze downwards. If I close my eyes, it would make me, for me, you know, I would get a little too dizzy. Yeah, okay. Um, especially with the deeper breathing. So I just kind of keep my gaze soft and gaze down. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's step to the right of our chair. And we're going to stand on railroad tracks. So we're going to step your right foot forward, left foot back a little, both heels down. So really feel rooted, but your feet are as wide as your outer hips. So your fluffy hips. Get your feet as wide as your fluffy hips. Draw your belly on in. Take your tailbone down. Hold on to the chair and rock forward. So the heels come up and rock back. See if you can get your toes up. Really good for balance. So remember, when we're actually walking, one foot is off the floor at all times, right? One foot steps forward. So at some point, if you have a normal gait, I'm just walking back and forth, okay? Yeah. Some point, if you're walking, you're balancing on one foot. One more time. Now this time, hold up if you can on your toes. Belly in, elbow down, lift your chest up. Good. See if you can barely touch the chair. Look, Mom, no hands. See if you can lift that hand off the chair and set it down. Good. Shake it out. You might feel your calf muscles really tightening. Excellent. Remember, we keep talking about that's your secondary heart. They consider it. It's pumping. Now, let's make it harder. You know my favorite words. Let's make it harder. So stand on a balance beam. You've only got four inches of balance beam here. Stand on your balance beam. One foot directly in front of the other. Mm-hmm. Much harder. You can bring your right hand to your hip or bring it out for balance, either one, whatever works. Lift straight up and down. Make sure the breath flows. You're not holding your breath as you're trying to do this. Now one more time, and we're gonna lift up and hold. My calves are screaming at me right now. Barely touch the chair if you can. Now keep your hand on the chair if you need to, or whoa, look mom, no hand. Oh, and set it down. Oh, yeah, isn't it getting that calf? Yeah, my left, my, well, my right calf, your left calf is, should probably be a little bit on fire right now. Good. Stand up nice and tall. Create, I call it a unileg, all right? So when I start to balance, I start to draw everything to, into midline. And if you're familiar with construction, a plumb line, uh, think of that line straight down the center of your body and start to draw everything in. My hip bones feel like they're drawing in. My thighs feel like they're drawing in. Everything draws in towards midline, and I establish more balance here. I have this stability. Tailbone down. Now take your right foot and reach it forward. Not, doesn't matter how high, just see if you can get it off the floor. You can bring your right arm out for balance at your hip, it doesn't matter. If you want to challenge that balance, bring your left hand to your hip. Now take that foot and stretch it back. And then bring it forward. Good job. Take your block and bring it in front of you. And I've got my block um, vertical. So it's the long way, the long skinny way. Should have had you set it up on your uh, seat so it would be really handy. So just set it in front of you. Left hand on the chair for support, unless you don't want it or need it. Bring your right foot to the block. Touch the block. Now tap outside. Inside. Outside. Inside. Maybe you don't need that hand on the chair. Or maybe you do. It's there for you if you need it. Yeah. Now tap the block. Tap forward and back, forward, and back. One more time, forward, and back, and release, shake it out. Good, I'm gonna kick that block over towards the other side, and we're going to switch sides here. 
So as you come to the other side of the chair, bring your left hand to your waist. Step your left foot forward. Step your right foot back and find your railroad track. So you're as wide as your fluffy hips. Take your belly in, tailbone down, and same thing we did on that first side. Begin to rock. Try to get your heels up, toes up. Might as well get that other calf muscle as tired as the first one. Now this time, rock up and hold it. Draw your belly and take your tailbone down. That's going to establish not just midline here, but this direction as well. Look, mom, no hands. Good, and then release it down. Oh, now we're going to step onto a balance beam. So front foot directly in front of back foot. Much harder to balance here. I was seeing the, now start to rock. Um, the models that do the catwalks like in Paris for the big uh, couture shows and things like that, they walk like this. You'll notice they walk with, I don't understand why, I can't figure out why they do it, but they do. And they're doing it in like stiletto heels. I'm not exactly sure why. One more time and come up onto your toes and hold it. Establish midline, draw everything in towards center and see if you can do, look, bomb no hands. Oh, and then release. Ah, oh, step it back and shake it out. Now take that left foot and lift it forward up, just off of the floor. Now if your balance is really challenged, you can keep tapping, kissing the floor. Chest lifts. Now we're going to take that foot back a little. So we're just changing the direction we're trying to balance. You can let go if you want. Oh, and bring it down. Now grab hold of that block. Let's bring it in. And you kind of have to determine where it, the placement is that's going to work for you. So I'm going to tap my left toe on top of the block. So I'm establishing in my mind where this block is. And then I'm going to bring the toe out and in. Out and in. One more time. Now bring it forward and back. You might have to move the block a little. Oh, nice, shake it out. Move that block underneath your seat and come back behind your chair. Now just wag your tails a bit. So not only for neuroplasticity and brain purposes are we doing this, but it's for balance purposes. So as I said, and we've worked on walking in here before, um, when we have a regular gait, one foot is up. So we're basically balancing on one foot for a moment, right? We all, we all do that. We all. But as we start to lose our balance, our sense of balance, our sh steps become shorter because we're not as sure of our balance. So we begin to shorten our steps. And eventually what happens is we begin to shuffle because we don't want to lift a foot up and be on one foot. So that's why it's really important, another reason that we, we work on our balance so that our gait doesn't start to change shortening up. <coughs> Come behind your chair. Now we're going to try something and this is about the neuroaerobics and it's crossing the midline of the body. If you are not comfortable leaving the back of your chair holding onto it, please don't. And you can just come like this so you can hold on to the chair. If you feel comfortable leaving the back of the chair, bring your hands to your waist. We're going to step left foot out, right foot in front, Left foot out, the feet close. Right foot, left crosses in front. Right foot, close. Take it back. Left, cross, left, close. Right, cross, right, close. Let's take it the other way. We're going to step behind. Right, left crosses behind. Right, close. Left, behind, left, close. Behind. Be <laughs> yeah, exactly. Line dance. Yeah, it's great fun. 
Excellent, and come back, very good. So those type of movements, while they seem pretty, maybe pretty simple, they're kind of fun things you could do at home if you don't lose your balance. Crossing the midline of the body, or really then if you wanted, I'm not gonna torture you with it, but if you wanted to start adding arm movements. So when you go one way, maybe the arms move the other way. So we're crossing midline. Let's do a couple sun salutations here. Give yourself some space, just barely touch the chair. Breathe in, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, hands find the chair we find downward facing dog. If you're new to practice, feet are inner hip width apart. We bend the knees a little bit and we stick our bums out to the people behind us. Not very nice, but that's what we're doing. Keep your spine long. Now remember ladies, Zip your jeans, don't spill your guts here. Pull your bellies gently in so that you're not hurting the lower back. Now inhale, look up, long spine, exhale, melt, down dog. Now we're gonna step forward. Step with your right foot forward. Let's switch it up, right foot, left foot. Come up onto your toes, inhale. Chest lifts, gaze lifts, exhale, step back, downward facing dog. Now inhale, look forward, step forward, right foot, left foot, release. Let's do it again, I'm gonna switch up the feet. Breathe in, exhale, step back, left foot, right foot, downward facing dog. Breathe in, look halfway up, exhale, melt. Inhale, step left foot, right foot, rise up, Exhale, step left foot, step right foot, downward dog. Look forward, step left foot, step right foot, and release. Good, shake that out. Let's turn everyone to face the windows. Mm -hmm. So we're going to face the windows. So everyone's left side up against the chair. Bring your uh, right hand to your hip. Take your tailbone down, draw your belly in, stand up nice and tall. And I'm going to move up here, so I'm with everybody. I don't know if everyone can see, but you can follow someone who can see. Right hand, yep, okay. Stand up nice and tall. We're gonna inhale, and we're gonna lift your right leg up and flex your foot. I've got my foot flexed, right? Feel as if you're pressing down with your right foot, so the energy is pressing down. We're gonna hinge it open, watch that hip if you've had hip replacement surgery, and we're gonna bring it back in. Now I'm gonna bend my standing knee. I'm gonna slowly press that right foot back. Keep your spine long, find balance. Bring it back in. I'm gonna set my right foot down and bring my left foot forward. Now my back is to the chair. Mm -hmm. Release your right hand down your thigh. Inhale, lift your left arm all the way up, exalted triangle pose. If you need your left hand on the chair for balance, leave it there. Now come back, both arms out straight, two straight legs. Take your left hand, reach down and grab the chair leg. Grab part of the chair where you can reach. Hinge forward and reach your right fingertips to the ceiling, triangle pose. Gaze up if it doesn't hurt your neck. Gaze forward if it does, or gaze down. Take a deep breath in, and a deep breath out. Now inhale, rise back up. Oh. Exhale, step your right foot back forward. Bring your hands to your heart. Take a deep breath in here, and take a deep breath out. Good, spin around, face the other way. Right hand on the chair, left hand on your hip, tailbone down. Inhale, lift that left leg up and flex the foot. Feel as if you're pressing down, find that balance. Externally rotate, hinge that hip open and bring it back close. Now slowly begin to hinge forward and press the foot back. Now you can leave the foot on the floor if you want. Draw your bellies in and slowly begin to rise up. Set your left foot back. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep, and right foot. Chair is on your back. Yep. Left hand touches down, reach your right arm up and over. Reach to the ceiling. 
exalted triangle pose. Gaze up if it doesn't hurt. Breathe in and breathe out. Sandy, come up the other way. There you go. Yeah, you just beat us to it. Now come back down, both arms out straight, both legs straight. Reach your right hand down and grab hold a part of the chair. Try to keep this nice lateral flexion. Reach your left fingertips to the ceiling, triangle pose. Beautiful, breathe in and breathe out. Now we inhale, begin to rise back up. Oh, bring your hands to your heart. Step your left foot forward to meet your right. Breathe in, breathe out. Release your hands and let's make our way back to our chair. How's everyone feel, okay? Good. Extend your right leg out in front of you. Flex the foot, but once again, make sure you're not locking that knee out. Bring both hands to that leg. Breathe in. And as we exhale, we're just going to slide those hands down the leg. Try to keep your spine as long as you can. Now, if you have any of the conditions we talked about earlier, just pause maybe right above the knee. If you want, slide your hands all the way down the shin, maybe to the ankle, and fold over that leg. Now lift your gaze and chest. Inhale, rise up with a long spine. Exhale, slide that foot in. Extend the left leg out, flex it. Press through, find your Barbie feet here. Press through the mounds of the toes. Bring your hands to your left leg, breathe in. Put a micro bend in the left leg, start to fold forward. Nice, all the way down. Maybe part way down. Now inhale, lift your gaze and chest, long spine, and begin to rise it up and bring it in. Lift your right leg as high as you can, flex your foot, and see if you can set your right ankle on your left knee. Now remember, if this isn't available, can everyone get up here? Not quite, okay. If it's not available, you can cross at the ankles or you could always bring your foot to a block, but flex your foot so you're protecting that knee joint. Everyone's foot flexed. Mm -hmm. Look down at your right ankle and make sure that it's not bending. Then walk your left ankle right under your left knee. So we're finding alignment here. Sit up nice and tall. You might already feel that stretch in the outer right hip. Once again, hip replacement, we've gotta be very careful here. Take a breath in. And if you can tolerate a little more stretch, we're gonna fold forward. I'm hinging forward. My gaze looks slightly down, so the back of my neck stays elongated. Ooh, is there anyone who's not feeling this? Yeah. Now, if you're really flexible, you could bring your forearms down to that leg. I mean, you can take this as deep as you, now, if you start to round in the upper back, you're losing a lot of that stretch. So lift your chest forward, draw it forward. And you should feel, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's where it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now inhale, flat back and rise up. Oh, and set again. There shouldn't be knee pain here. And what you're feeling in the hips, I'm hoping is a stretch and a level of discomfort, not pain. If it's pain, you need to, you need to come out of it. So let's try that second side. So I'm gonna lift my left knee high. Now I'm pretty flexible, I can get it up there. But if you can't, you're gonna to try to lift it high and then we find that external rotation. Look at your left ankle. Make sure it's not supinating, bending. And you can tell if there's a whole bunch of wrinkles in your ankle, it's bending. And don't tell me they're just there naturally, all right? <laughs> Walk your right leg back a little. Ankle directly underneath. Now sit up nice and tall. Keep your chest lifted and hinge at your hip creases, but bring your chin in slightly towards the chest so the back of the neck stays long. And then you play with the pose yourself. Where can I go? Maybe I'm at my max. Maybe I can come down a little bit deeper. I'm wanting to feel the stretch in the outer left hip and maybe into that left glute muscle. 
your, no, your right heel wants to lift up. Yeah. yeah, try to keep it down. It's probably just trying to accommodate it tight. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. We want to stay rooted here. Now inhale, long spine. Oh. And really shake it out. Ah, oh, yeah, the faces are so good to go with it. Let's take a little twist here. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, just reach the right hand back. Make sure the right shoulder rolls back. Draw your belly in and twist from there. That gives us that little kind of um, a cue where to start the twist. Now, if you have any issues, once again, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, issues with the spine, and you don't want to twist very deep. Now, inhale deeply, and exhale, come out of the twist. Inhale, let's sweep the arms up, and exhale. Just get set up. Roll your left shoulder back. Make sure your right shoulder stays back. Now lengthen first, draw your belly in, and gently start to twist. Take a deep inhale, and exhale. Beautiful. Let's scoot back and make ourselves comfortable. I'm going to dim the lights as you Make yourself comfortable for that last final posture of Shavasana. <sighs> and as we close our eyes, just rest those palms on your thighs. I want you to bring your awareness to the right <clears throat> side of your body. Start with your right eye, right ear, right cheek, right nostril, right jaw, the right side of your neck, your right shoulder, right elbow, right wrist, right hand, and right fingers. The right side of your chest, the right ribs, right waistline, right hip, right buttocks, right thigh, right knee, right ankle, right foot, and right toes. A heightened awareness of the right side of your body. Then let's bring the awareness to the left side, the left eye, left ear, left cheekbone, left nostril, left jaw, left side of the neck, left shoulder, left elbow, left wrist, left hand and left fingers. The left side of the chest, left ribs, left waistline, left hip, left buttocks, left thigh, left knee, left ankle, left foot, and left toes. Bring a heightened awareness to the left side of your body. <coughs> now begin to experience the body as one whole unit. Bring your attention to midline crown of your head, the space between your eyebrows, <coughs> the bridge of your nose, your upper lip, your lower lip and your chin, the notch at the base of your throat. center of your chest, your navel, 
your pubic bone. Feel a strong sense as you draw towards midline, feeling stable. Take a few rounds of breath into full body. As you inhale, inhale all the way down to the toes. Next inhale, inhale all the way down to the fingertips. And now bring the palms together at the center of your chest. Finding Anjali Mudra. <clears throat> using our practice to explore not only the postures and the movement of the body, but also incorporating the mind. I thank you once again for sharing your time, sharing your practice, but most of all, sharing your energy, not only with me, but the others in the room. Thank you for allowing me to guide you this morning. Have a wonderful, balanced rest of your day. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.